Hey, what's up guys? It's a last expert here, and in today's video we are looking at, well, a midway replay. It's going to be a bit weird for both of us here, um, but I've decided that we have to do a carrier video once in a while, and I figured, well, this is a great replay that features a pretty interesting ship now, uh, midway. Uh, so what I'll try to do, and since you can't really see how the player of this midway, uh, how what he's doing, I'll try and kind of put it through your head and try and give you the best view of what I think he's probably doing. So if you'd like to send us a community replay, send it to biaworldofwarships at gmail.com. Uh, please include the screenshots, the game itself, and a pretty short description of what occurred during the battle. So Dmags here, he is actually playing by himself, which is, uh, I guess, a bit of an oddity uh, when you're playing with uh, carriers, but I guess he is a pretty dedicated carrier player. So at this point, uh, the Midway has two fighter groups, two torpedo bombers, and two AP. We don't know if they are AP or HE, um, but it looks to be, based on these icons, they look to be HE bombs. You can kind of see that here. It uh, looks like we're getting some pretty early scouting with these with these bombers um, but I'm gonna try and do my best to uh, kind of rotate between the few uh, different uh, squadrons the midway has of course if this was a Hercurio this would be a little bit more difficult for me uh, I'm certainly not the best carrier player and and doing all these uh, very close micromanaging sessions is of course not ideal now uh, the the Midway pretty recently had its hangar capacity changed pretty pretty hard, I would say. And again, here we we miss some nice bomb drops on on a gearing actually, and we can confirm that it is of course HE. Um, so uh, so the Midway was very good in late game uh, in every aspect, whether it was um, you know whether it was ranked or competitive or what have you. It was actually quite good, uh, in my opinion. And let's see, maybe we can see a strafe here on these enemy bombers. But the fact that the uh, the midway doesn't have over, I think I think previously had around 136 uh, planes in reserve, or total planes, it, it now suffers pretty hard. Uh, especially in the late game, with with these uh, lower tiered uh, lower tiered planes on some of these, uh, like the torpedo bombers and the dive bombers, uh, I believe. Actually, no, it's only the torpedo bombers. My mistake. Uh, the the dive bombers are tier ten. Same with the fighters. Uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't have the midway yet, so um, so here we're watching D Mags kind of. Uh, attract the enemy carrier with his fighters while fighting over I guess I guess friendly AA and he actually strafes out because I mean he's never gonna win this but his main strike is actually going on this Musashi so he's distracted the enemy carrier with uh, one, one of his fighters and that carrier has, has dedicated two of his fighters to that side while D-Mags is providing a very nice drop which he is probably uh, you can see right there, you saw that the uh, Musashi was kind of turning in. And, well, that's probably why they uh, the torpedo bombers are at tier 8. Because when you can get 10 torpedo bomber hits on a full health, pretty much full health Musashi. Uh, well, balance, comrade. But, nonetheless, I still do think it was a mistake in general. And again, I don't, I'm don't. i not a good carrier player by any, or a great carrier player player by any means but I at least know some of uh, you know I at least know the mechanics and I've gotten myself to a high enough tier where I can consider myself knowledgeable on the topic and I do think that it was a mistake producing the the planes down to only a hundred total um, it, it's kind of absurd to me because the courier does have all tier 10 planes and I guess a hundred of them Granted, they're spread out across multiple fighter groups, but uh, still, we're looking at um, you know some tier eight planes, some tier ten planes, uh, and well, the main thing with the tier eight planes is 
one the HP pool that they have and the speed and the speed is probably the significant part especially for uh, the competitive aspect so uh, I do think instead of 136 planes maybe dropping it down to like 110 one you know 115 that way the midway still has a, a vi viable chance to actually uh, you know use its bombers and use you know use its lower tiered bombers to its advantage instead of having just a complete disadvantage as it as it appears we're looking at some nice couple uh, a couple other bomb drops by uh, dmags so very nice very nice job there and and it's kind of interesting there's there's a couple ways you can play the carrier i don't know which one is most effective but um certainly i would always keep the torpedo bombers together because one, if you do come across a destroyer, you can cross drop and with with these midway torpedo bombers. Well, that that is just ridiculous. We can see there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It looks like eight uh, torpedo bomb or yeah torpedoes uh, from one squadron each. And if you've got eight, if you got a total of sixteen uh, going together, well, not many destroyers are going to be able to outrun that or dodge that at the very least um, but it looks like the uh, since he is I'm sorry seven <laughs> I could have looked at the numbers here instead of trying to count but um, six so um, yeah so I, that's what I would recommend always keeping the torpedo bombers together um, however the dive bombers here we're seeing HE dive bombers so uh, HE dive bombers you can kind of spread out and and kind of work together with your torpedo bombers like we saw the HE bombers go into that and kill that Tannenberg practically uh, but I think for the most part you can kind of if if you're using HE bombs you can kind of separate them you can also use them for spotting like use what I'll do a lot of times and here's another nice drop by DMAGs very very nice drop perfect range Almost nothing you can do. Only miss two, but I mean, it's not much you could do. That was a near perfect drop. Um, the only thing uh, that I would say is that where was I going? You yeah, you want to keep the torpedo bombers together. Dive bombers you can keep separate. Oh, what I typically like to do is actually uh, have one dive bomber kind of float in the background, uh, like here. I we see that there's a uh, there's a fighter group here now I would probably throw another bomber up here just to scout behind them uh, but that's just me personally and then you can just use that other one to kind of uh, aid your aid your torpedo bombers like this Yamato who took a lot of damage from those torpedo bombers I would you know uh, send one of these bombers in to attack him but of course with when you've got both your bomber squadrons well you can get that double fire that will end up killing the Yamato so that's that's kind of a difference in play a little bit um, and you know that's completely okay now if you are using AP bombs I would definitely recommend keeping them together and the reason being and the reason being is because you want to go for that dev sync strike uh, potential on things like Des Moines even with defensive AA up uh, if you if you do have the the capacity to take out a ship at a given moment uh, why not increase your chances all that much especially against things like a Des Moines or, uh, or maybe like a Moscow or something like that or and this is just for tier 10 just because the midway is at tier 10 uh, but of course it could be uh, anything lower like a tier 9 or a tier 10 whatever so here we're gonna see again DMAGS using his fighter group to kind of strafe uh, the enemy fighters and also the the bombers as well and I would expect to see him maybe strafe out again um, however it doesn't look like that's the case I think he was more preoccupied with this drop which again is a very very nice drop uh, a little bit behind but it looks like we're gonna end up getting Neptune uh, at the end of the day so a very nice drop there got a high caliber and a devastating strike and we're already up to 212,000 damage here now one thing I do want to point out though is um, and you typically can do this, and I, I do like to attempt this as much as possible. It's kind of hard when you're coordinating a drop. Um, 
and when, when you're coordinating a drop and trying to strike the enemy planes um, and with a with a, a CVUI lag and and just overall just poor efficiency I want to say of, of the, the switching between the uh, different fighter groups um, it, it is a bit difficult but basically my point is if you've got a locked up fighter group and in this case we only had like one or two fighters so it probably wasn't worth it um, but if you have a fighter if you have your fighter locked up with the enemy fighter and there's bombers coming in uh, from any which way you know you can always strafe out now of the fighter engagement and actually take out some of those those bomber heads and the alternative to that is you take out those bombers and then uh, oops, I, we just missed a kill on the torpids here with the dive bomber squadron it looks like we're probably gonna get this one too the alternative to that would of course be or the the added benefit of that would be the fact that now you're out of the fighter engagement and you still have fighters um, you know being able to get used Very nice strafe there, uh, baited the enemy fighters in, and then strafed back at him. He noticed, D-Max noticed that uh, the fighter was just following him, and uh, of course he he uh, baited them to follow him, and then strafed back. And see, this would be a perfect situation, and look what D-Max does. He n notices that there is a situation, and he takes out nearly the entire... Uh, torpedo bomber squadron and even if this rune doesn't have defensive fire he can probably shoot down at least one or two planes and just for the uh just for shits and giggles he actually does strafe that other uh, those other two bombers and again one one thing that is oh and look good fighter management strafing again noticing that this carrier is not paying attention a uh, very very nice play there by by d mags now here, um, I don't know what is more important. I would say probably striking the Chung Mu is a little bit more important. He's kind of isolated and taking all your, your torpedo bombers into a Missouri that has good AA and is somewhat protected with fighters. I probably would say that's a mistake, but it looks like D-Max will try to strike. Here's trying to very, again, this is a nice, nice play. You know, using the low health fighters and and the fighters with very little ammo and then coming in with your uh fighters with a lot of ammo and a lot of health you know st strafing out of this group and then strafing again with this group um is 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 a very important tactic to uh to use now here we're seeing of course uh we're seeing some drops maybe no just spotting or attempted spotting so we should see a strafe here going in soon and uh, looks like we didn't maybe not too sure there another very very nice drop by new D mags for another 30,000 and this is why the, the midway torpedo bombers are just insane and I think that is why wargaming I decided to nerf these or nerf the midways hangar capacity because of, of stuff like that and in the midway especially if you have HE bombs I think it is more important to actually sacrifice your bombers more uh, than your torpedo bombers just due to the fact that well when you can do about a 30k if you if you drop correctly a 30k salvo every three four minutes with with your torpedo bombers well I would I would take you know a full group of dive bombers for a, a 30k uh, drop on on this guy now here uh, just again probably we're looking here trying to spot maybe I wasn't really sure what D Max was doing there but he allowed his Friedrich to get pretty low um, but it looks like the Friedrich will be okay he's healing and uh, I think it'll also be oh, yeah he does mention that sorry Sorry, he messed up. Um, so just a bit of a mistake there. Probably just, uh, well, he's been going off for 15 minutes and, you know, a little bit stressful when he's on 262k damage. And, uh, but like I was saying earlier, we're spotting here with the empty dive bomber. The midway is probably almost out of planes. We're looking at 51 planes shot down and assuming the other team has been 
or our team has been pretty good about you know using using their AA. A, you know this is the enemy care should have a lot of planes, so this is a, a nice tactic, and and it's essential. This is what carriers are supposed to do. They're supposed to spot, and this is a classic tactic: dropping your dive bombers, and and actually, uh, you know, just scouting around. But of course, the problem with the midway is the bombers actually can't run. Away. Not sure what happened there, but uh, see here. Good fighter management. Bit of mistake there. I think I think strafing with this, and then I think immediately coming in with the second uh, second bomber squadron or uh, fighter squadron rather would have been better. You know, strafe with one and then cover with the second, so you get the dispersion aspect, but. Uh, with the Friedrich on such low health, I don't know if it was actually um, is actually viable. Uh, you know, if, if Dmax had the ability to actually save that uh, De Grob. So again, another some nice more uh, more spotting. Now with this, now you can in this situation you want to start start moving. So uh, Dmax, he really shouldn't be. You know, sitting here uh, and especially not reversing, like playing like a Yamato. But I would say, you know, either go to one of these caps. Um, you see the Missouri's at D, so maybe heading towards A would be, uh, you know, a viable option. And that is probably the worst thing you could have uh, getting detected here in the back of the map. And well, oh boy, we're seeing another very nice drop. I guess the carrier didn't. Uh, Use defensive fire or something? I know he did. He did. Um, hmm, interesting. But I, again, I don't know if actually D Max has noticed that he's been spotted. Let's see if he gets torped. Now he he recognizes that the DD is near him. Uh, so at this point, the DD is probably somewhere, somewhere here, or uh, possibly even here. Um, I, I don't think he's he's he can't be here uh, for sure, but. Uh, D Max immediately starts moving, and hopefully that that little juke was able to put off that D D, D for as long as possible. But I do think in this situation, D Max maybe maybe a minute, two minutes ago, he really needed to start moving um, because now he's putting himself in a position where well, his Missouri made the mistake of trying to go kill, and for some reason Yuguma opens up. Uh, I guess he's trying to get the fire, but oh. Good luck, mate. Good luck. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to end the game here. Oh. The, <laughs> the enemy carrier burned out. Torpedoes are going to go... Uh, going to miss, which is good. Now it's just down, and I just don't think we're going to have enough time. Unless unless D-Max kills the Yugumo, we're going to... You know, this is going to be a really close one, but he's got only one drop to do it. Uh, he has to go in with the torpedo bombers. This is this is basically the moment for Dmegs, and I don't think he's actually going to make it. Uh, you know, he's he can't even cross cross drop now. If if Dmegs had maybe thirty more seconds, I, I think I think Dmegs could have could have finished us off because Dmegs is a quite a good player. But uh, either way, it was a good game. Okay, so here we are looking at the post-battle results. Um, unfortunately, it was a defeat. Like I said, if he had maybe 30 seconds longer, I think D-Max could have actually won this for his team uh, by killing that enemy destroyer. But with 311,000 damage in a carrier, I don't know what more uh, you can ask of a single player. And I think it's one of the... It's a, it's a rough one to take, for sure. Especially when you get Confederate Devastating Stray Kraken Unleashed. Uh, clear no it's not clear sky anymore it's now I've got the name it's like king of the sky or something like that uh and then high caliber uh but we got 36 torpedo plane hit uh torpedo bomber hits 27 bomb hits 64 planes you know again those five uh ships killed uh team score wise 22 24 had had dmags won and well let's put it this way when you are on the losing team and you get more basic speed than the top 
earner on the enemy team, I would. It's pretty safe to say that your team wasn't the best, and they didn't coordinate the best. Um, but certainly, if Dmags had won, we could could have expected probably about 3,400, uh, maybe even pushing the 3,600 range, because 311,000 for, uh, you know, for uh, for a carrier. Granted, it's not all that all that much, uh, I guess. Uh, of course, it's all relative, but because uh, I have seen higher games, but you know, this is certainly a great game nonetheless. And Dmax, you know, you did a great job overall. Diesel report, uh, 60k from bombs, torpedo bombers. See, this is where this is where <laughs> this is where fun things happen. 231,000. Take away the bomb hits. And the flooding and fire, like 231,000, I would be very satisfied with this game. Uh, of course, uh, midway things, right? So, a very, very nice game overall. Uh, a bit unfortunate we couldn't get a win. Certainly would have been uh, a game for for the record books. But uh, credits and XP wise, come on, Dmax, come on. I know you have, pr you need me, you need premium, man. Come on. But but either way, even at tier ten, and who said carriers can't make money uh, with with a game like this? I, I sure as hell hope you are making money. But a uh, very nice game overall, and unfortunately we couldn't get the result we wanted. But uh, hopefully you guys somewhat enjoyed this video. I tried to make it as interesting as possible, and and I know you guys can't see what D Max is actually doing and. I, I hesitate to put up any more carrier videos, uh, at least, uh, you know, from another person's perspective or, or even my perspective recorded after, uh, you know, through the replay system. I'd rather have it be like live or something. That way you can actually see how I'm, I'm coordinating my drops and strafes and whatnot. Um, but let me know.